Today we're going to be taking a look at the Draken Tugela 2.0 and um, it's kind of an interesting time. I'm recording this on the 10th or 11th of uh, May 2019 and these watches are currently available on pre-order which means they're still being manufactured and uh, Draken are expecting to get these in in mid-May, that's their current estimate. So literally we may be a few days away to a couple of weeks away from getting these watches, at which point uh, the price goes up to typically closer to retail pricing uh, as opposed to the much better value pre-order pricing. So uh, let's paint a little picture before we get stuck in with uh, the watches here. Um, first of all, me. I, my name is Neil Cresswell. I run the microbrand store. We do sell the Draken Kalahari, which is in here, but we do not sell the uh, Draken Tagila 2.0. We've no intention of stocking this. It's a really nice watch. And in fact, it has a very bright color um, on it, a very beautiful, uh, unusual blue color uh, that I really like, uh, as well as the other popular colors you'd expect, like black and so on. Um, we do like this watch, but we already have watches in this price range of this uh, kind of diver style. So we already have that category covered. So we're definitely not going to be carrying this one. So this is an independent review. It's not a sales pitch in any way. Uh, I also run uh, the Kickstarter Watches and Horology Microbrands group on Facebook um, and as well as a number of other groups. And uh, we do a lot of reviews as well. So I'm going to make this um, an independent review, but I want to give you the disclosure uh, that we do carry the Draken Kalahari. And the reason I've got the Draken Kalahari is not to plug it. It's uh, some of the features on the Tagela are going to be taken from uh, the Draken Kalahari in terms of, uh, you know, for example, the logo on the side of the watch. And we don't actually have a full final sample of the Tagela. It's kind of interesting. And we're actually wearing a Tagela here right now. And uh, this is uh, kind of a version 1.0, but with a 2.0 dial, because that's the best they can do until these are produced. They don't actually have spare prototypes available. So we're going to be taking a look at this. I'll explain the differences. I've got this on this blue strap that really matches the blue color of the dial. This is a 2.0 dial that people will be getting. Um, but this is the 1.0 case and, and, and the, you know, pretty much everything else, the bezel and so on is 1.0, but there's a lot of similarities and I'll definitely go over the differences. So this is still a useful review. And as you can see, there's no, uh, Draken logo on the side. And the reason I have this box uh, as well, as well as to show you the kind of stuff you get, like the warranty card is to just simply show you, this is the, uh, Draken Kalahari, um, which, um, is another really nice watch with unusual features like power reserve. But you've got the Draken logo on the side, and they're planning on doing that on the Tagela 2.0 as well. That's a really nice feature. Uh, they had to do it here because there really wasn't room on the dial with the power reserve. They didn't really have to do this on the Tagela. You've already got a logo on, on the front. But I actually think it's a nice thing on the side. It's it, not so much plugging the watch. It just adds a little bit more interest to the side view of any watch. So uh, that that's kind of a nice feature as well. And these crowns are loomed, and I understand that the crown on the 2.0 may be loomed as well. Not not 100% sure of that, but we'll go over the uh, features. So I'll put this to one side. We're not going to be looking at this anymore. Uh, let's go over the contents of this box because it's going to be pretty similar to the 2.0. This is the box I got my kind of one and a half <laughs> one, or, or kind of not quite a 2.0, almost a 2.0 in. And um, obviously there's no warranty card or anything like that. Um, but you do get these straps. These have been worn. I, I received them worn. Obviously they're used for photography. So you can see this mark on it. So you do get some leather straps with a, a sign buckle on it. And then your watch would arrive in here held in place by this uh, elastic. So it's very securely with a, a held in place and you've also got some nice padding and then any straps you get I think that there's an option for a bracelet which I would recommend any straps you'd get would also uh, be up here along with your warranty card and details so the only other thing I'm going to show you from the Kalahari is this is the Kalahari box and obviously you've got the watch and the strap in here um, but you get you know a kind of a, a card a little sew on pouch and then you also got this kind of stuff which is useful so you get a warranty card which is a two years uh, manufacturing defects and then unlike a number of other micro brands they actually do make the effort of giving you a very nice instruction book that goes into details how to do everything even how to change your straps as well as 
setting the time and that kind of a thing. So I imagine they'll be doing the same thing with the Targela. It's, you know, people who collect watches, maybe you don't need that. But for people who don't buy watches that often, it is a very nice thing to see. Many micro brands leave this out and they just ship you the watch, maybe with a warranty card and that's it. So nice to have. And these watch uh, cases, um, they're kind of uh, PU leather, I suspect. But they're, you know, I've got, I've got a ton of these different sizes holding a certain number of watches. They're absolutely perfect for traveling. With, when I keep a watch in a suitcase or in a travel bag, a spare watch, you, you can do that. So definitely a nice thing to have. So if, when the watches come in this, that's a really nice feature. Uh, and if you ever need to ship a watch back, like a warranty return or something, I mean, hopefully not. I'll, I'll mention about uh, Draken a little bit further. Uh, they do some great testing uh, so it's unlikely, you know, before they ship out, they actually put your watch on a time grapher. Not many brands do that and make sure it's performing properly. So you're unlikely to have a warranty issue uh, from the point when you receive it. But obviously things can happen, damage in shipping or something like that. So if you do get a, a watch that has an issue, it's nice to have a case like this to send it back. And it makes repackaging very easy. You don't have to send it in a big box. Makes it cheap to return when you have a small container like this, uh, and it's pretty light. So let's look at the watch and let's go over the features, um, and uh, we can change the straps as well. I'm leaving it on this strap for now, because really it's the watch we want to look at. So you know the basic features: movement inside is a Seiko NH35A, which is uh, very popular amongst uh, dive watches, particularly at the price point that this one's at, which is roughly two hundred eighty to three hundred dollars. Uh, and uh, NH35A is a great movement. It's ultra reliable. It's a low beat movement. So second hand moves about roughly kind of six ticks per second, approximately. Um, it's, so it's not as smooth as a high beat movement, but there's less wear and tear. So if you aren't going to go diving with it, you, you can wait longer between service intervals. If you are going to go diving, you're going to want to service this every four years or so anyway, just to make sure the seals are good. This is a 300 meter dive watch. So that's that's one of the first specs out the way. Uh, the, it's a 42 millimeter diameter, excluding the crown, which should be popular and excluding the crown guards as well, I'd imagine. Uh, and the a 22 millimeter lug width, which is perfect because that's the most common size, uh, makes it very easy to do aftermarket straps here. And it's 48.5 millimeter lug to lug. Now that's important because sometimes you get 50 millimeter for a 42 and 48 means you can, this is sticking out a bit because it's on a NATO strap, but I'll put it on a leather strap and you'll see that this actually is, this is what defines how much you can wear on a wrist, not the 42 millimeters. That's just a general indication. If this sticks out too far, it'd look pretty stupid. So, um, or feel uncomfortable potentially depending on the straps you're using. So 48.5 is very nice. You could probably wear, uh, it's not too dissimilar to a 40 millimeter. So this is going to work on a medium sized wrist. No problem. I've got a seven and a half inch wrist, which is exactly medium. You could probably go down to six and a half inches with this. Um, and then obviously you can wear it on a larger wrist as well. So I'm going to get this off so we can take a closer look at some of the features on this. Obviously Sapphire, Crystal with uh, an anti-reflective coating on the inside, 120 click unidirectional bezel, all the stuff you'd expect in a 300 meter dive watch. Um, so um, let's talk about what's, uh, well, let's talk about the colors first of all. And I'm going to um, just talk about them and I might put some screenshots up as well, uh, just taken from the Draken website, which uh, helpfully paint a picture. So this is the limited edition kind of blue dial a very nice bright blue, unusual blue and blue bezel, uh, limited edition. And then they also have a, a blue uh, bezel with a black dial. Uh, and then they basically, all the other three are black dials. So they have a black dial, black bezel, which is always nice in a dive watch. They, they can wear that pretty much with anything. A black bezel, sorry, black dial with a red bezel. Uh, and th this is not so bright as the blue. They're more uniform colors. The, this bright blue is pretty unusual. It's not a sunburst. It's it's a matte, um, but it's a, a really nice color because if you collect watches, you probably have a lot of deep sunburst blues and it's nice to have a lighter blue for the summer. Imagine, you know, swimming pool blue, kind of diving, that kind of thing uh, would be a lot of fun. And they have a black with a with this blue bezel. So you can optionally do a black uh, dial instead if you prefer. But if you're going to get the get a version, I will be interested in the limited edition version here uh, just because it's it's a nice blue, a very bright blue color. 
um, which you don't often see. So we'll talk about some of the features and differences before we get any further. Uh, now, this is, doesn't have this, but it, it's still a very good loom job. The final production version is going to have no, no less than 10 layers of loom. Um, normally you get like, you know, seven layers or, or even fewer than that, and people will show off, oh, look, we've got seven layers of loom. So 10 layers of loom is extremely thick. That's really nice. And not only is it just Swiss Super Luminova, it's X1 uh, version of that, which is the highest grade. It's like five times brighter or five times longer than standard Swiss Super Luminova, which is already a, a killer loom that everyone really wants to get on their watches. So it's going to be exceptionally bright C3 a Super Luminova X1 grade loom, 10 layers. So that's going to be just mind blowing, I think, when, when that comes out. But here we are in daylight uh, in an office also with all the lights on. If I just light up the loom a little bit, you can see how it how it's going to work. Uh, just try and get focus on this. It's probably not going to work. Let's see. Um, yeah, focus is a bit hard, but there's some lines from the uh, nine o'clock and the three o'clock that pass through the loom. And actually, when you have it loomed, you actually still see those lines. So it really helps you accurately see the exact hour marker on this. So already the indices are an unusual shape uh, in some places. But uh, it's just not, I'd have to turn the lights down to show you this loom. But when I'll turn the lights down, in a, actually, let's just get that the lights off right now. Be right back. I always do these reviews uh, in a single take so you know that there's no uh, funny business doctoring stuff or anything like that. So here we have some loom and you can see the you can see these uh, horizontal lines I'm mentioning at, at three o'clock and nine o'clock and also at 12 o'clock. So that's really nice. You don't have any loom at the six o'clock position because you have a date window there. Um, but already that's just a few seconds with... Um, a UV light, and you can see the loom very clearly. So imagine 10 layers of loom, and imagine uh, X1, the like the top grade, which people don't normally go for. It's a little bit more expensive than normal Swiss Super Luminova. That is a pretty nice uh, combination to go for. And another difference, you only see the loom pip here loomed, but I believe the entire bezel is going to have some loom on it as well. So that is going to be even better than it is right now. So I definitely liking this. Let's get the lights back on. Okay, so also talking about uh, things like colors and so on while we're looking at this. Um, uh, the crown apparently is going to be a little bit longer for a better grip. I always fuss about grips when they're bad. But I actually do not have a problem with the grip on this at all because it's very nicely knurled. It sticks out enough. I can easily unscrew this with my fat fingers here. I tend to be fat fingered. Pull it out, adjust it. It's a very nice, easy to use movement. So I have absolutely no problem with this. Changing the time, anything else as well. Um, but it's going to be apparently a bit thicker. And they also added the uh, the text to say they're adding loom to the logo on the tip. So presumably this is going to be loomed in the same way that the uh, Draken Kalahari is loomed. Also, there's a logo on the back of the Draken Kalahari. So that's going to be interesting to see a nice loom on the uh, crown. It's a nice little touch, nice feature. I'm going to just take this off so we can take a look at the back and I'll change straps very quickly if I can do that live. If not, I'll pause this because I'm looking through the camera rather than directly at things. Um, but it's got a nice, fairly deep logo on the back. Uh, it says Draken. Um, to my mind, I don't think that's necessary, but you've got a serial number and so on and, and a landscape. So presumably uh, that's going to be the landscape picture that you're going to get on the production version, or maybe it looks a little bit different. This may be a 1.0 version, and it's just the dial that's been changed. So let's see if I've left off any differences. Loom on the bezel, numbers and markers will be C3 as well. The bezel is going to be engineered. They say they're going to make it a bit tighter with a more solid click. I actually really like the bezel the way it is now. Um, it's got a very, you know, it hasn't got any play in it, which... Actually, most people like that, but if you're going to go diving, you want a little bit of play so you can clean out the... I actually find this is already stiff enough already, so maybe this is the stiffer one. Um, but it's not too stiff that you can't turn it, and it grips very easily, very easy to adjust. Uh, so this bezel is in a super good condition. They're also going to... Uh, uh, let's see, we covered the logo on the side. 
that we covered the loom. The minute markers are going to be a little bit bolder as well, which is good on the on the tracks. So that's nice. Oh, and the bra uh, there's an optional bracelet with this, which is also going to be bead blasted the same way that the case is here. Um, that's kind of a two way street, you know, always candid in my reviews. I like the fact that it's bead blasted. It's a, a different finish. Um, and the fact they've got a bit, the equivalent color on be blasting on the uh, hardware on the NATO strap, which is an exact match. That's really nice to see. Um, but when you end up using a strap or something, oh, so if you scratch this, I don't know uh, if you can polish it out, if it's going to have that be blasted look or not. I, find, I think there were one or two scratches I've seen on this because this is not a new watch, watch when it was sent to me. Here we are. There's one on, one on the side. I don't know if you can pick up on that. So it, it it hides scratches fairly well. You can bear, try and get some focus on that. Yeah, there we go. So you can see the scratch here. You know, you have to really look to see these two scratches. So it hides scratches fairly well. So I don't think it's uh, that big an issue, but I wanted to at least cover it's a little bit different. If you have a polished finish, uh, you can actually uh, kind of buff that out sometimes. But really... It hides scratches very nicely being bead blasted. It's a similar color to it. Um, I don't think that's going to show as easily as maybe on a polished. So um, definitely it's a good finish to have and a very robust dive watch, 300 meters. While we're talking about colors, uh, you'll notice that the date window here, which is at six, is an exact color for the dial. That's really nice to see. They bothered to change the uh, date ring inside. So definitely a really nice feature to have. And I like the design, the fact that the indices are a little bit different to normal, uh, very much a Draken style. Um, it's, a, it's a nice watch for sure. So let's talk about the uh, one remaining feature we've not covered, which are the uh, straps. That you Obviously, I don't have the bracelet here that you can... Getting a bead blasted bracelet, I'd strongly recommend that simply because you probably won't be able to get one somewhere else. And if you ever want to wear a bracelet... You want one that matches the case. So that will be a must get, in my opinion, if you want to consider doing that. Uh, here's where I have my fun and games trying to do this through the camera. I'm going to just try and get these spring bars off and uh, fit these other straps in so you can see what it looks like on another strap. Now, keep in mind, I'm probably going to, there we go. I always do this from the back so I don't accidentally scratch the case. There we go. So those are off, and this is the easy bit. Um, so uh, you've got quick release straps, which is always a very nice thing to have. And we'll talk about the quality of the strap in a minute. And this is me doing this blind, so hopefully I'll just get it to click by touch, because normally I'd look where that would go. Not quite there yet. Uh, sorry, give me a few seconds. There we go. That one's in place. You heard the click. Um, and then we'll do this side as well. Quick release. So these are obviously well-used straps. They're not new. You know, I got this as an example. So these are both in place and I can now put this on my wrist. Uh, just take this away behind the camera just so I can not, don't want to knock the camera over. And uh, you can see what this looks like on a on one of the stock straps that it comes with. So here we go. It's a bit of a different look to it. So you've got the NATO strap and you've got the Draken strap as well. So the first thing I noticed about this strap, you know, obviously you've got a vintage style with the stitching and, and the tip at the end here. It's a really soft strap, very, very soft and subtle, uh, supple. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily a long lasting strap, but it's, you know, they haven't done any pad, put any padding in. And that's important because no padding means you can, do all kinds of fun things with your strap if you want to. So there you go. That I mean, it's really a soft strap. So it feels super comfortable. Um, it's uh, going to crack a little bit, uh, which is inevitable. It is a genuine leather, which is the lowest grade of real leather. And you can hear, see I've accidentally scratched that with my fingernail, um, just so I could see how that worked out. So it's going to pick up a little bit of wear, but that kind of adds to the character. But the nice thing is, if you don't want this strap, you want to go for something else. 22 millimeters, pretty standard uh, thing to go for. So I do like this watch. I definitely am pleased they sent it to me to review. Um, uh, would I pick this watch for myself? Uh, that's always a question. And then this is where it comes down to personal taste. I like the blue. I like the bright colors. If I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt, I know I might actually wear one of these because uh, 
it will look pretty good. Would I wear this with a long sleeve shirt? The answer is for me, no, because I like to get colors that match my shirts to some extent. And I tend to wear darker colors or less flamboyant ones. But, you know, this is a kind of sun and fun watch as far as I can see. It's, you know, you'd wear this on the NATO strap in the swimming pool or on the bracelet in a swimming pool or on vacation, you know, I mean, you could certainly wear it in an office if you want. It's a little bit brighter now, but again, if you don't like this color, there's the black and the black. That will go really nicely. Uh, it's certainly a nice watch. Price point, it's about where it needs to be. You can definitely pick up some watches with maybe a few more features. Uh, maybe you like them, maybe you don't. Uh, in the, you know, roundabouts 215 to $260 range, you could maybe get a ceramic bezel. But there again, you can get watches with features like this uh, for a lot more than the price being asked. So it's right in the middle of the price range you'd expect for this watch with some nice features. It's not a cookie cutter watch, it's got its unique indices. I would recommend this color because it's different. The markers are different. So overall, I get a very favorable impression. And the thing about Dragon watches, as I mentioned, they put them on time graphers to check each one individually before they send them out. I sell a lot of watches in the store and the Kalaharis I've had zero issues with. So I'm super impressed about the uh, quality of what they're doing. Um, and I really think this is a good quality built watch to go for. Um, but it's in the entry level price range. So it is really an entry level diver. Um, um, but it's a nice 300 meter diver with some good color on it. And it's going to be a little bit different with the logo on the side. And that loom is just going to be awesome. So, uh, definitely a, a strong recommendation for me. Uh, it's one I can uh, uh, approve and, uh, it might not be, you know, um, you know, it's, it's obviously, um, how should I put this? It, you know, it, it, in terms of, you know, overall look from a distance, it's fairly uniform. It's not weird or anything, but it's, it's just a very nice dive watch that actually has one other feature that I really like about this, which I don't normally see so much in, in dive watches. And it surprises me somewhat. This is actually a very light dive watch. Um, Compared to all the other NH35 uh, dive watches that I have that are 300 meters, this is by far the lightest. So if you don't want a heavy watch, um, especially if you're having fun fun in the sun, this is one I would definitely consider. So there we go, the uh, Draken Tugela 2.0. This is the Super Blue Limited Edition. Thanks a lot. Take care.